talk us through your first investor meeting? First off, where would you be meeting these people? Wow. I've met investors in all kinds of places. I've met investors in coffee shops. I've met investors in, you know, high-end hotels. Um, I've not met them at all. I've just talked to them in person on the phone. I've just talked to them on the phone. Uh, so it really, you know, it's just wherever the opportunity strikes, wherever they're comfortable, wherever you're comfortable, uh, and, you know, yeah, <laughs> however it's going to work. You know, I've done it just straight over the phone uh, with no meeting whatsoever, just a conversation, let them think about it, close the deal in another, in another conversation, sign the agreement, you're done. It's the way it should be, actually. <laughs> Is it mostly the investor asking you questions or are you taking the lead? Um, if I'm... If I'm contacting someone, I'm putting them through, I'm giving them the information and putting them through the paces, taking the lead and, and letting them know what this is and what it you know, contains and how it works and here it is and you know, taking them through essentially what it's going to be and what that deal is so that before we've ever gotten to paperwork, um, we have in spirit agreed on the deal. That's the key element to where people don't realize that they have a deal. It's the art of the deal, right? If you haven't decided on or discussed all the deal points, then why are we taking it to a lawyer? The lawyer is just going to ask you those questions and you're going to have to figure that out. And if you haven't decided and one of those could be a, something that would break the deal, then you could break the deal in that process of having not vetted that through the process. The major deal points. How much? What are they going to get? How long? What rate? You know, you usually have to put an incentive in. So, you know, pay them back at 110% and give them, you know, a certain, make that worth a certain amount of points. And this is regardless if, as to Not whether... Unless the, it's a loan, you know, if you're right. making it a loan, right? So you have to pay it back in a certain amount of time for, that's, that could still be the 110, that could be 110%. You know, at a certain point, that 110% and then giving them a back end, that means it's not a loan, so you don't have to pay it back like in September <laughs> or whenever it is. You can pay it back whenever because they have the po the points are essentially there, you know, but they need to, do, when the money comes in, they're getting that up to that point. And now as for giving you that money, now they receive this percentage for the lifetime of the project. And what are you preparing for your pitch, what are you bringing? I know you said sometimes you do this over the phone or whatever, mm -hmm. but if you were to meet in person, what are you bringing with you? Well, if it's more than likely it's a deck. Um, you know, it's a deck that, you know, for a specific project or a specific, you know, whatever the project is. Um, if, I'm, if it's a streaming network or if it's a movie, you know, whatever it is, it's, you know, you're gonna have a deck. You're gonna have, uh, and along with that deck, People say decks and they make it like it seems so impressive, but really the thing is a deck is really nothing unless you have the stuff that goes behind it, the stats and the figures and the things. So essentially the presentation written that goes along with the deck, right? The This is the story of why you should give me this money or what this is what you, why you're giving it to me or this is the story of the, the uh, what do you call it, the internal butler or the incisive butler, or the, the butler savior, or whatever, the butt of all jokes, I don't know. Uh, but whatever that is, and then this is what you're gonna get. One it has to say you're gonna lose all, you could lose all your money, and you'll never see any of it again, that could happen. Or then the best thing that could happen would be all of these things, you know, that it does this. Or the medium thing would happen would be these medium things. And, you know, and have it and ask. You have to ask for money. You have to say, this is, I want this much. You know, people go in and they don't ask for things. They don't directly say what they need it for and what they're, they just kind of, kind of ballpark it. Or if you really feel, it's like, no, I need $5 million to make this movie. Well, what happens if I give you $2 million? Well, I'm still going to have to raise $3 million to make the movie, but I could do this. You know, you have to have that kind of definitive, Divisiveness. I know that that sometimes can be 
off-putting for you know more genteel types but to be perfectly honest that's what business people who are who especially if you're going to go to a business person that's how they're going to be when it comes to making an investment if not there's always indiegogo and that's fine too it's great sure. i love indiegogo we you know combo hey love it some perks do it love it but you also have to fulfill the investor perks and you know, exactly i mean there's still have to you still have to fulfill things it's just that, you know you don't necessarily have to pay them back which is nice right are most of these deals where it's 110% so it's a loan of some sort well the, the 110% is kind of just always been a standard thing that i've learned since the first time i've ever done one of these is that you're doing that and then you're doing you're giving them points so you're giving so on that money you're paying them out to so that because essentially it is a loan you know you're going giving me this money i'm holding on to it to for this ascent to amount of time to do my business so it's fair that you to make a certain amount 10% which is not an obsessive amount by any stretch of the imagination on that money and then you also are an owner of that money and you will be paid out after you're paid out the 110% you will receive 13% 13 points of the movie and that money is kept in a bank account under the LLC of the film. Mm -hmm. Okay. So or it could come from a holding company that then drops it down to the LLC. Holding companies are usually good things to have because then they can be combined with other things and then could just be dropped down to like, you know, like the movie we're doing, Craving LLC. Well, that that's really only for that movie. Right? That LLC will disappear. Holding companies can be around. You can keep a holding company. That's just a bank, a bank account that the money's going to come into and then it's going to drop down into another account. So then that can be a holding company, essentially. Is a holding company its own LLC and then you have subsidiaries? It's an old, it's, it's, yes, yes. So like Fox does, in a big model, if Fox does productions and now it's all under Fox, but then anytime any of those shows, they're all under some other company name that they've made up that because those then so that it's not liable back to 100% to Fox it's liable to itself as an entity or you know, business on its own that's the idea of a startup that's where it, that's where it kind of comes from you're starting a company from scratch every time you make a movie and then it kind of just goes away so you don't have to keep that LLC active necessarily after after a certain point no like at a certain point, you don't need to, once you've completed the movie and done all the different things, a lot of times what they'll do is then it'll just kind of roll over to the holding company or to that bigger company or distribution company where that money's coming from. And then if, as long as it's dropped down and paid out to everyone appropriately, nobody cares at that point. That way you don't have to keep paying taxes on an entity that's not doing anything except paying out money, right? So that would be one of them. For the internal butler, the first investor you brought the project to she passed she mm -hmm. said i don't think this will make money so now you're bringing it to a new person how are you ramping up the pitch are there different things you're going to make sure that this person sees that she didn't see she didn't get well i think that that's that starts to be it's all theoretical and i hate responding to theoretical things sometimes because they're responsive and you can only anticipate what some person would think but let's just say that they actually said that they felt that it wouldn't make money because uh, black movies don't sell well foreign. Okay, that's an actual an old feeling because if we went and we shot it and we made the disposable butler or the, or the internal butler, Idris Elba, then I don't think we have the, the problem that we're talking about. So, because he does sell for him, uh, and he would sell both coasts. He would be he's a name here and he's a name there. So that would be an interesting casting way. So you'd have to think about you'd have to come up with if you can't run around reacting to what everybody thinks. If you hear something three times, then it may be true, right? So if I heard it the first time and it was something, and I, we talked about it amongst the team and whatever, and we said, okay, well, if we're again, whatever, then. But if the next person says the same thing, then I'm certainly going to address that thing um, because I wouldn't want an, a third one to pass because there's only so many investor meetings. So I would have to judge for myself. 
Is it just because this person doesn't want to invest in it? Because a lot of times when we're talking about movies like we're talking about, they're not investing to make money. They're investing to be a part of something that might get an Academy Award and maybe make money. But they're really looking, that to, the type of movie we're talking about is more of an awards movie, independent movie, festival movie, right? So you're gonna invest in that because you wanna take your friends to the movie theater and say, see, I gave those guys the money and they got to the theater and it's you know this little movie that could. So not so much about, so that you gotta understand the mentality of why people are investing in movies in the first place and who you're talking to. Um, so, you know, if they have a profile, like I've talking to the people who invested in Waking and Ned Divine. So when they were talking to me about my movie, they're not necessarily talking to me about my movie thinking it's gonna make money. They're talking about maybe discovering somebody and putting them on the scene because that's what they can brag about at the country club in Orange County, because the, their house is worth more than, their, their driveway is worth more than the movie we're gonna make for. You know, their vacation is, you know, so they're, it's not about that. So, it, you know, and if we're making a studio movie, then it is about making money. It's 100%, <laughs> there's no other reason that they're making it anymore, except unless they're doing it through their little, so-called little lines, right, that they make their prestige projects out of, because everybody still wants to make prestige projects. So that's kind of, that's my approach is, is I don't, I try not to, because I have a tendency, look, I, as a person, I can try to think what you're thinking as much as I want and try to anticipate what you're thinking. But the best thing I can do is, is try to ask the questions that I would ask and then leave the, and then, and work off of that. Um, because it's a much more of a trust thing. I can trust where I'm coming from and where the team is coming from that I'm working with than necessarily trying to read your mind. But what I can do is I can have that checklist and if I took it out the right way in the first place, then they wouldn't have these ejections in the first place. So I probably know that maybe this is a cinch that we shouldn't have taken out then. It probably shouldn't have gone out. If it's that, if it's that clear that that's like, that's I'll never make any money. Well, then I'm taking it to the wrong person probably, right? Um, because I should have been taken to somebody who would want to make an art movie. No one would award and work with Idris Elba. Get to hug him. <laughs> Shake hands with Idris Elba. He played DJ at my party. That's what they want. <laughs> That's what they want. Let's suppose investor A says yes to part of your pitch. Mm -hmm. I'll give you half the money you asked for, mm -hmm. and you have six months to raise the rest of the money. Mm -hmm. How do you get the other half? There might be a couple ways to do that. Now that I have somebody willing to give me the money and I also probably have some incentive, that means that I can get somebody else some money back quickly and I have somebody who's willing to take whatever seat I give them because now they've put themselves in the back seat. Because if I get whoever's the last money in, usually has control. Like in the sense of when they get their money back and all those different types of things because they're gonna essentially give the green light. So that, party then now you've like look i've got somebody willing to do this this is the package this is what we need so there's a lot of different ways there's also completion fund companies you know that you could look at there's also now you actually have an ability to possibly depending on how much they're really willing to work with you if they're willing to put it in a holding account you know so that it's like you can't have access to it but it can be seen and be verified then that's that's really that that's the golden ticket because now you can go to a distribution company and say, I have this much money, I'll exchange with whatever, that's the money in the account, you know, you said whatever you want to get involved, this is how much money I need. Here, um, I forget the name of it, there's a couple of them finishing, New Market used to be a finishing company. Here in New Market, you know, they're not around anymore, but a company like them, I have half of my money, I need this much to get myself to this where my tax incentive would, would cover my money coming back. Because there's a point where at a certain point you don't need all of the money, right? You only need a certain percentage of the money to get yourself through certain phases of the money. So you need to be able to show them that you can get the money, get the money into the account, and then secure it all into one thing and make that a whole kind of juggling. And that can be a juggle, and people sometimes fail in that process. Because it's not being able to find, you found one, but now you need to be able to find another one, and it's half. That could be a lot, depending on, for us, we'd be talking about 2.5.
when people can't always find that money, are they sometimes already in production? Well, no, they can't go because remember, the, your person said that they would only do it if I found the other money. So maybe they put it in a holding account and they let people see that it's there, but they didn't let us use it or touch it or play with it. But maybe a bank would maybe consider giving us a loan against that if they would guarantee if they would guarantee it. Maybe, but that's kind of not what they're offering us. So we'd have to really find another investor to to secure that other half. Essentially, they're essentially they're saying they'll be the last money in without being. They're saying they want to be the first money in, but they really want to be the last money in. They want somebody else to say that they're willing to do it too. Because then, last money in is always first money out. Yeah, on some level, but it's really just they're they're still hesitant for some reason. If not, they just give it all to you, because they probably had it. Because that's why you're talking to them. So there's some they want you to prove something more. There's something that's not. It's good enough, but it ain't quite good enough. Which is okay. Maybe they just don't want to carry the burden right now. Maybe they have it, but they, you know, they they promise her daughter's getting married next year, and she's going to get a five million dollar wedding. So there you go. They're that rich. <laughs>